This week I've been talking about an essay I wrote a long time ago. How to live happily among people at war with all human joy. Cultivate indifference and press on regardless. That's my advice in this essay. What it's about is managing conflict egoistically and at some point, sometime soon, I should talk about the praxis of egoism because I am utterly astounded at how wrong everyone gets it, including the so-called egoist. But this post is very, very useful for understanding egoism from the inside out, understanding self-interest from the point of view of the actual long-term, lifelong interests of your actual, real, undeniable, inescapable self. It's about managing conflict egoistically, which means managing conflict in the way that is most productive of your own long-term interests and least destructive of those interests. And it all turns, of course, on the affectionate display. When I first wrote this essay, I didn't have that term, the affectionate display. Now I do. Now I understand the importance of affection in the service of maintaining ongoing reciprocal relationships, reciprocal transactions. How to get the girl to agree to go out with you a second time, and a third time, and every time from then on. But the affection to display is not um, self-sacrifice, is not uh, some kind of... Um, Schmooism, where you volunteer to sacrifice your interests in order to keep the peace. No, this is absolutely the best expression of egoism in a situation where you have something to lose and behaving badly will cause you to lose more than behaving affectionately. That the aggressive display will almost always result in more loss than gain, and it will certainly result in more loss going forward because no one will want to interact with you a second time after you've treated them like shit the first time. But there's more to it than this because it's not just about maintaining the relationship and keeping the reciprocal transactions going. It's about your ego. It's about yourself. Behaving affectionately toward other people wherever possible, even in circumstances where you might be able to rationalize behaving aggressively, Behaving affectionately will make you better, will make you a more admirable person to yourself. What could be more egoistic than that? So I've been working on this. I've been working on this all my life. Literally 35 years and more, I have been working to become more affectionate in my displays toward other people. I haven't known the language to use for this, except within the last couple of years, but this is what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to become more sociable in my interactions with other people because this is the great deficit. I'm actually even worse on the cautious virtues, but I give a shit about the cautious virtues. I just don't care. But I do care about being more sociable with people because I want to be a better man. I want to have better relationships with people. I want to have more satisfied, more profitable relationships with people. I want to have more long-standing relationships with people. I want to have more cordial relationships with people. But more important than all of that, I want to be a better man myself. I want to behave better even when other people might argue that I should behave worse. I do not want to be a bad man even if I think I can get away with it. Because I can't get away with it. I have to answer to myself. And I want to be a better self that I'm answering to. I want to have better answers to give to myself when I am uh, putting the screws to me for things I've done. And accordingly, I've developed rules of thumb for um, taking me through situations that could result in conflict or may already be conflict-ridden situations, but I don't want to make them worse. The four rules of thumb are very simple. The first is assume the best, is simply assume the best about other people, that if there's any um, possibility that there could be a conflict between you, Take the time to see it from the other guy's point of view and see if he really is doing his best for you, even if it's not what you would have done in his place. Just assume the best about the other guy's motivations 
in the same respect, give the other guy the benefit of the doubt. That if there is a colorable doubt in your interpretation of the facts and his, give him the benefit of that doubt until you have reason to withdraw it. And on the other end of this, when you're the be beneficiary of that kind of doubt, do your best to remove it. Document your facts in such a way that you can demonstrate that your interpretation is correct and that the other interpretation is, is false. Take that doubt away. But meanwhile, when there is a possibility that the other guy could be right, give him the benefit of the doubt until you know better. Even when it turns out that someone done you wrong, if you intend to maintain that relationship, if you intend to continue to engage in reciprocal transactions with that other person, then help him do better. Show him, teach him, tell him, let him know what it is that's disappointing you and how you can do better, he can do better, how both of you can work harder to make sure that you both get satisfactory results from your ongoing transactions. And as soon as you resolve that there is no future in your relationship, that no future transactions can result in results that are better than they are worse, then break up without rancor. Put that person behind you. Put them in your rearview mirror and drive away. And don't ever think about them again. Don't seethe, steam, marinate yourself in your anger. Don't hoard resentments. Don't cultivate envy. Don't resent anything. Put it all behind you. It didn't work. It's a broken machine. Work on the machines that can be fixed. Don't work on broken machines. Just put them behind you. I laugh at myself. I laugh at myself all the time anyway. I am certainly the most amusing person in my life, and I uh, try to take every bit of delight I could realize from my foibles. But I laugh at myself because what I am arguing for is exactly what the Nazarene actually meant by turning the other cheek. He didn't mean turn the other cheek so that the guy literally could injure you again. What he meant was don't injure yourself just because someone seems to have injured you, with or without malevolent intent, by the way. The other person's malevolence is his business. Let him suffer it. You don't have to suffer his malevolence. But I think turning the other cheek is best expressed with your butt cheek. You turn that other cheek and walk away and go... Find someone who likes, respects, admires, welcomes, and um, reciprocates your affectionate displays. This is how egoists interact with other people. You will not fix the universe by chastising a miscreant, but you will make yourself smaller, cheaper, uglier, less lovable. I can't think of anything that would be more opposite to rational self-interest than self-diminution. So make the affectionate display instead. And this is my affectionate display to you. This is the Church of Splendor. And I am so glad that you lent me your mind so we could talk about this. I'll see you again next week.